call Mike, call Mike, call Mark Spears and call Gary Washburn. Uh, these guys are the uh, the authors, the co-authors of a great book that I told Spears on Instagram that I'm looking forward to buying. I don't want a, I don't want a complimentary copy. Mark Spears, my brother, another brother from another. Mark Spears, love this brother, Gary Washburn. Uh, welcome. But they are the co-authors of a fellas. book. The Spencer oh. Haywood Rule, Battles Basketball and the Making of an American Iconoclast. What's up, fellas? What's up? Man, you don't age, man. You don't age, Holly. What's up, bro? What's up, hey, Mike? Man. I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to keep it together. You know what I mean. You know how it is. Oh, man. So we wish we could be in person with you guys. I know, I man. Know. I, hey. I really, I want to point that, I really want to say this, seriously. I'm so proud of you, brothers. I'm proud of you both. It is not easy Same. to uh, to write a book and then to write a book together. I think that's a great experience. Just uh, give us a sense of how the process, how did it start? Did Spears, did you go to Washburn? Washburn, you go to Spears. Hey, we should do this thing. Like, how did it work? Well, actually, uh, Bill Duffy, the super agent, you guys know, he uh, reached out to me and he said, Spencer Haywood would love to do a book. And I had done some stories with him with the undefeated and he wanted me to write it. And as you guys know, man, I, my schedule was crazy and I wanted to do it and didn't really have time to do it by myself. And I knew Gary, you know, me and Gary go back a long time, uh, was interested in doing a book too. And I was like, hey, Gary, man, you want to join with me on this project? He was all for it. And, um, you know, so we collaborated and uh, came together to start interviewing Spencer Haywood to eventually get this book done. Yeah, Gary, I mean, I know what this, just doing this show means for me and Michael, it's a long time coming for our relationship, just as brothers, as friends, as colleagues, Gary, then, then Mark, what did this process, how, how much closer did it bring you guys? What did it do for your relationship? Oh, wow, that's a heavy question, Mike. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, it's it's been amazing. It's been amazing to. You can cry if you want. You want to? You can cry. I saw you dab your eye. No, I'm a cry. I'm a cry. In a, I'm a cry. In a, I'm a cry in a car. Um, yeah. You, I think, like basically, as black journalists, we don't get a lot of opportunities to do these type of things. We don't get a lot of book deals. We don't get a lot of opportunities to write about the athletes for which we cover for whatever reason. I mean, we can go into that maybe on another show, but I think the chance to work with Mark and then, I mean, it's, it's always great to work with a close friend and then on someone who's just so, so impactful um, for the last 50 years, a guy who people really don't know his story and he's been kind of um, underappreciated for sure. Um, you know, over the last decade, he's gotten a lot of flowers. He's gotten into the hall of fame, but for years, people kind of didn't know who Spencer Haywood was and didn't know his impact and didn't know that he went all the way to the Supreme Court. And one of the people that approved his uh, allowance into the NBA was Thurgood Marshall. And he met Thurgood Marshall. He went out to dinner with Thurgood Marshall. I mean, that stuff, that's historic stuff. That's stuff that we all need to know. So to, to tell such an impactful story from, you know, humble beginnings, Mississippi cotton picker, all the way to marrying Iman and being in New York and playing for the Knicks and winning a title with the Lakers. I mean, it's just, it's a story that's just so rare and unusual. It was just a pleasure to tell it. Mark, what did it mean for you to partner with Gary? No, I, I think Gary said it best in terms of, you know, getting an opportunity. Neither one of us have ever written a book before. I've been covering the NBA for 21 years. We used to be at the Globe covering the Celtics. Gary's been covering the NBA for over 15 years. So, you know, the, the, I think it was frustrating time after time when you see different NBA stars, a lot of which who you have great relationships with, and they didn't ask you if you want to do it. <laughs> so hopefully not only does this open the door for future projects for both of us, um, but maybe some other athletes will say, hey, man, I got to start considering some of these black journalists too to – once I'm um, having, I have close relationships to tell my story. And, and that's not to say that white journalists and whatnot don't write great books or anything like that. But I do think that um, Spencer Haywood had a comfort level uh, in, in talking about a lot of things in terms of racism and growing up in cotton fields and, and things like that, where perhaps he felt like he could lay his 
hair down a little bit and, and be more comfortable talking about these stories than perhaps he would have otherwise. Uh, for both of you, uh, uh, Gary and Mark, do you get the sense that any current players or recently retired players uh, know the story of Spencer Haywood? Uh, at, you know, have they verbalized that to you or to him? No. Yeah, like I'll say, I'll say, I'll say two. Especially Kevin Durant knows. Um, he gave, he's given Spencer some shout outs. There was a, a kind of a where Spencer got his number retired and Durant was playing as a rookie for the Sonics. And Durant kind of called him out and said, that's the OG, you know, as young people do, they call you OG as, as a kind of a, a compliment. And he kind of said, that's the dude who started it all. And even at All-Star Weekend, when, when Kevin Garnett was doing a lot of media stuff, he said, hey, let's not forget the guy who was the originator of this whole preps to pros or, you know, leaving school early, what they call back then hardship cases, was Spencer Haywood. So players are slowly learning. Spencer told me, like, Paul George has uh, given him props. You know, I think the one person he would like to give him props is LeBron James. I don't think they've had a, much of a conversation. Maybe that could happen one day. But that's the one person I think he feels like should kind of recognize him for what he's accomplished. I will say I remember the great Earl Lloyd, the first black player in NBA history. Uh, he used to always go to a rookie symposium, you know, when all the new rookies came in and ask him, hey, have you, you ever heard of me before? And they'd be like, no. And he would tell them the, his story and tell them about a lot of the history of the league. And maybe perhaps uh, Spencer Haywood could be the, the guy that does that in the next generation. There, there's certainly a lot you could learn from him in terms of history what he's done, and also he, he's overcome a lot of pitfalls uh, that, that the young players, as they do come in the league, you know, can learn from him. So hopefully the MBPA can give him an opportunity to speak to these young guys and perhaps give them the book when they come in um, so that they can learn a lot about him and, and some valuable history. You guys have already dropped a, a couple of nuggets, uh, you know, especially, I mean, I, I've, I've seen him quoted as saying that his his goal growing up was to just be the best cotton picker, you know, in Mississippi. You know, that was, and who knew, obviously, that he'd go on to, to make history and, and, frankly, change the landscape and the future of the NBA with the, that landmark Supreme Court ruling. But uh, Gary, then Mark, give us a little bit of a, of a little little teaser. Obviously, it's going to be full of anecdotes in this in this book, full of stories, but what's the the most memorable story that you're willing to share. You might want to save some for the book, but give us like a memorable That's example right. of a story you were like, oh my God. I mean, you already talked about Thurgood Marshall dinner. Yeah. That's hard to top that. You got anything else? Uh, I'll say the Nike story is, uh, so it's 1972-73. Spencer is all-star with the Seattle Supersonics. The small shoe company out of Oregon, Beaverton, the University of Oregon area, approaches him and says, hey, Spence, would you like to be the spokesman for our shoes? Nike in 1973 was considered a running shoe, okay? It was it was the low tops. It was not, I mean, I think probably a little bit before your time, Mike Smith, but when we grew up, it was Converse, and it was Adidas. Nike was mm -hmm. still considered kind of like, eh. So Nike wanted Spencer because he was local. He was near obviously Seattle, uh, Portland, wanted him to be a spokesman. They offered him an endorsement deal, and they offered him 1% of the stake in the company. Spencer's agent, who he will not name, said, well, that sounds real good, but how does that monetize for me? How do I get paid hmm. out, of, out of future stock? So Nike said, okay, we'll just give you $100,000. And Spencer took the $100,000, oh. which... In 1973 was a lot of money. I mean, that was a lot of money in 1973. So it's not like $100,000 now. It's probably like about two, three million. But the uh, he never got the stock. And he said over the years, Jordan, Phil Knight, all you know, Jordan, he was like, "Hey, Phil, can I get that stock back?" I'm like, "Nah, man, we good." <laughs> um, and oh, Jordan's giving him a hard time. I mean, obviously, one of the things that you learn because it not no one knew. Everyone's like, "Oh." You know, damn, they, they, they had Jordan. No, they didn't have Jordan in 1984. So let's not, right. you know, it, it was an understandable kind of faux pas, uh, but it's something that he kind of shakes his head at, and he just, you can you can do nothing but laugh. You know, I, I'm glad uh, 
Mike Smith phrase it that way. What are you willing to give up for free? Because we're trying to protect. I, I, listen, let me be your advisor. We're trying to protect, let's protect several the copies. goods. Get yeah, people to buy that well, that's, stuff. There's, there's plenty more. I mean, Spencer. Okay, I know. Okay, it's good. It's unadulterated. I mean, it's. I mean, I'm sure Mark is. I mean, some of the stuff we heard and listened to, and he told us was like, "Wow, uh, how can I get this in? How can I phrase this correctly?" Uh, because I mean, Spencer, Spencer's a, the, the master of the four-letter words, uh, but it's he's it's he's a brilliant man. So yeah, that's just one. That's a, that's one nugget. But no, that's plenty more from the days of you know Mark was able to talk to him about days of growing up in Mississippi to the Olympics to everything else he's ever accomplished.